What's going on guys, Mac V here. You're joining me for another Asphalt Street Storm Racing video. In this video, I'm going to be updating you on all the most recent tips and tricks that I have came across to help out all the noobs out there and maybe some people who just weren't aware of some stuff. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to get into, if you're new to the game, guys, buy the BRZ. Now, if you really don't want it, that's okay, but the BRZ is the best D-Class car by far. So if you want to win races online, you need to buy the BRZ. Whatever you don't do, don't buy the SS. It sucks. Don't buy the Renault, because that's a straight-up mom wagon. Buy the BRZ or the Fiesta, and you can get by with the S2000. All right? Let's get into the second thing, which is going to be the start line system. I'm actually going to go into the offline campaign to show you guys the system. As you can see, this slow-ass SS pulling up to the drag strip. The SS's are not good cars, remember that. Alright, so at the start line, let me show you guys something quick. See here, I false started. Now, okay, okay, it still brings this up. This is good. Now, as you saw, if you want to rewind the video, that's cool. You'll see this white imaginary wall with these little square blocks making, making the wall. That is where your start line actually is. So basically think of the cars starting about 12 feet behind the start line. You're timing the launch so that when the game says go, you hit those square blocks, okay? Now, I hit it early, so this that's why this message came up here. And it's just trying to explain exactly what I just told you. So, you want to make sure you, you figure out a time where you can hit it as perfectly as possible. Now, we're in the rain, so we didn't get it that perfect. Maybe we'll be able to get one more race in. Look at those slow-ass SS's, man. Let's uh, let's get back into another campaign race so I can show you guys again. Hopefully with some nice weather this time. I'm not going to do any editing on this video because it's mostly just talking. Oh man, and then of course we click on the ad. My bad guys. I accidentally clicked that. Okay. So let's get into the start line again. Okay, now we have some nice weather so I'll try to get a good start here. I'm going to release just after 3. It wasn't too bad. Don't worry about the shifts. I was just focused on the start right now. And don't worry about if we win or lose. That's, like, that's not what we're trying to do here. Remember, guys, if you find all this information helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to share the video if you feel like doing so. Let's get into the next tip, which is going to be the needle on your speedometer. Okay? Um, let's see if we can relate if we can race someone. I believe this is a bot, but whatever. This is who we're gonna race. So you're gonna see a green zone. The green zone is gonna be there for your launch, it's gonna be there for your shifts and everything. Now watch this green zone. I don't know, we false started. That sucks. Let me try to explain this. So that green zone is gonna be there for your launches and your shifts. Imagine if that green zone was just bumped back a millimeter. Because that's where the actual green zone is. If you have your speedometer, if you have your needle on the front of this green zone, the right side of this green zone, like for example, if I get it, oh, I can't get it on the right. See that? It was behind the green zone, but it was still a perfect launch. The green zone is is not where it shows you, okay? The green zone has been moved back a millimeter, basically. So I hope that makes sense. It's hard for me to explain it, but just picture it that way so you always want the needle at the back end of the green zone, whether you're launching or whether you're shifting. Keep it on the back or the left end of the green zone. Now we're going to get into nitrous, guys. How to use nitrous as efficiently as possible. So... The first thing, if you're in nice weather, right after your first shift, in basically every single car, right after your first shift, you're going to want to hit nitrous. Even in the rain, after your first shift, 
you should be hitting nitrous. But as you can see, here we're in the snow. So watch when I hit nitrous here. I haven't hit it yet. After second gear, I'm hitting nitrous. Again, it's basically the same for every car as of right now. So after second gear in the snow, you hit nitrous. After first gear in the rain or in good weather, you're going to hit nitrous. Okay, let's get into the score system and car skill. Now this Focus RS is not a very good car, if you were wondering. Um, to my knowledge, for this class... Let's go back for this. Let's just uh, take a look in the shop real quick to uh, jog my memory. Oh guys, another tip when racing that uh, it might it might seem obvious, but it's really not because even I messed this up for a while. Focus on your speedometer. Don't be, like, I noticed I would shift and I would look. I'm like, okay, does it say good shift? Does it say perfect shift? Does it say bad shift? And there's no point in looking up because what's done is done. Or I would launch and I would say, oh, how fast was my launch? I'm looking up to see how fast my launch was. There's no point because you're in the race. You can see all that stuff after, right? And you can see your shifts in your peripheral vision anyways. You don't have to look up at them. So really focus on your speedometer, and your races will be a lot better. So I can tell you right now, the Shelbys are very good, um, just from seeing other people driving them. But I believe the 370Z is the best in B class. Now when we go to C class, I believe the Impreza WRX STI is the most powerful car in C class. The GTI and the Renault are terrible. Uh, the Skyline I have, and I have not done too well with it. Um, and the SS, you know, as I said, always trash. But this car right here is probably going to be what you want. Of course, D-Class, we went over. It's the BRZ. The BRZ is nasty, guys. It's disgusting. If you want some nice BRZ tunes, check out my channel, because I have a lot of BRZ Z tunes up on my channel. Uh, still some of the fastest tunes in, like the community um, next thing we're gonna get into the score system so as you can see we have a 403 rating on this BRZ so now if I have the BRZ I know I have the most powerful car and if I've upgraded it the way I should then a 403 Renault let's say the Renault was a 403 we're gonna kill it now, as you upgrade your car, this rating's going to go up. These are what the ratings are stock, so you'll never see a 403 Renault, I guess, because the minimum is 408, unless they've taken damage. Um, so, for example, I upgrade my BRZs to 413, because that's the highest D-Class here. So I get, that means it puts me in a lobby with a lot of stock D-Classes that I can easily beat. So I have a lot of 413 tunes out there. Uh, so yeah, if you have the BRZ, then every other car that's the same score as you or lower, you should be beating, right? So it, it gives you a good way to measure if you're going to win or lose the race you're currently going into, and it helps you to know if you should be pink slipping or not. So let's say, let's say I have the Fiesta ST, which is the second fastest D-Class in my opinion, that's what I've seen, and I have some really fast tunes for it. If I have a 403 Fiesta and I see a 403 BRZ, I'm not going to pink slips it. I'm not, I might race it if I'm bored and I want to race and it's going to be challenging. I'll probably lose because that's the BRZ. But if it's, if it's a Renault or something else, then I can beat it. So use the, that score system to match yourself up. Now, also what you'll be given is your weight and torque. So you'll see the score and you'll see weight and torque below. I'm not going to go back into multiplayer lobbies to show you, but if you want, you can rewind and you'll be able to see when I challenge someone, you can see their weight and their torque. Now, you can stack it up against yours. When it goes to two different cars, the weight and torque doesn't matter as much, but if you're racing the exact same car as you, so let's say I have a 403 Fiesta and I'm racing another 403 Fiesta, but I see my torque is 
uh, 195 and his is 193 and we both have the same weight, then I know I probably have the advantage during that race. So that's another thing to keep in mind uh, when you're in online lobbies trying to get wins and maybe trying to do pinks if you want to do that. Uh, so now, what I told about, I, talk, I mentioned upgrading your car properly. So to upgrade your car properly, the basic thing you want to think of is keeping your car's stats balanced. Um, let's go to one of my my best BRZ tune. Let's see if we can find it here. Where is it? This should be it. Okay, so this is my best BRZ tune. Uh, as you see, the BHP is 281. Now, the BHP, I completely ignore when tuning. Let that go up on your own. What you're focused on is torque, which isn't displayed here. But as you see, my grip is 10. Now, minimum... Yes, I want to equip the car. Now, minimum, what you're going to want to do, the first thing, go to your tires. Minimum, put stage 3 tires, okay? I would say that's the bare minimum if you want to run this car as fast as possible. Ideally, you obviously want to be at stage 5. I'm at 4. It's still very good. Um, it's a good spot to be at. And when you're upgrading your car, just think balance. So, like, for example, I didn't put this part in because it adds weight to my car, and I didn't really want to throw off the balance of my car. Now, there can be tunes. If you add weight to your car in this upgrade, you could take a lot more weight off with a weight reduction, right? So just think balance, progress your tune in a balanced manner, and you should be fine, and make sure your tires are upgraded. Uh, that should be it, guys. I think I've covered everything. If you are experienced and you think I missed something, Feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My last tip to you, my last tip would probably be to like, comment, and subscribe because I will be updating my tips as I find them out. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. I'll see you in the next one or maybe in my live stream tonight.